What do you do to make yourself feel better when you're sad? I've been going through a pretty tough time these last, oh, let's say two to three years, you know, since 2020. And sometimes I like to listen to sad music, sometimes to the point of literal tears. And it makes me feel better. And that got me thinking, why? Why does sad music make us happy? Hey everyone, what's happening? I'm Faz. Thanks for joining me. And today I wanted to talk to you about why sad music makes us happy. We'll define what sad music is, how it helps us cope, and how it all relates to milk. Got milk. But first, let's define what sadness is. I know you've been sad before and you probably know what it is, but it can vary from individual to individual. So let's define what it is scientifically. Sadness is an acute emotional state, and it presents in people in different ways, such as lethargy, tears, uh, trouble sleeping, loss of appetite, things like that. And it's usually triggered by a negative event, losing someone, being betrayed by someone you trust, a worldwide crisis that isolates you for years, you know, just things we don't like. But it's important to remember that sadness is normal and it's inevitable, but it's not the same as depression. Depression is a chronic physiological condition. It's a mental health disorder, while sadness is just a temporary emotional state. So now we know what being sad is, but how can music be sad? Well, we can divide the aspects of sad music into two categories. There are learned cues and there are universal aspects. And so the learned cues are things like the major versus minor scale. For example, something in the major scale sounds happy, and something in the minor scale sounds sad. And this doesn't always have to be because the music sounds sad. It could just be connected to a time in your life when you were sad or a very specific memory that you have associated with even the happiest piece of music. And that can still put you into a sad state. But these learned cues are not universal. Even the major and minor scale, different cultures use different notes, and we don't all have the same memories associated with the same songs. But there are a few things that are considered universal for sad music, and those are the aspects that we associate with the human voice when it's sad. So those are lower pitch, less variation in pitch, slower, quieter, and a darker timbre, or if you want to be French about it. I also couldn't really find what the researchers were defining as a darker timbre, but for me, that just means a deeper, richer, smoother tone. It's really hard to describe sound qualities, but hopefully you get what I'm trying to say. So why do some of us enjoy listening to slower, quiet, dark sounds? Shouldn't that just make us sad? For some of us, it does, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but for most of us, roughly around 70%, it makes us feel better. And the reason why, surprisingly, has nothing to do with our usual suspects. Typically, when we're talking about mood, the conversation surrounds serotonin and dopamine. But when researchers tested listeners after they were exposed to sad music, they found elevated levels of prolactin. Prolactin is a protein hormone released by the pituitary gland. Its main function is to help in the production of milk. But like the other hormones in your body, it does a bunch of other stuff too. It helps regulate metabolism, our immune system, and our mood, which is why it's not only found in those of us that produce milk. When you cry, your body releases more prolactin and it has a consoling effect, which can be described as a general calmness, feeling good or tranquility. Experience tranquility. Think about when you've cried in the past. Afterward, did you feel a sense of calm and relaxation? I know I tend to feel pretty good after my nightly weeping because the world's on fire, everything's falling apart, and those in power keep convincing us to consume more and more while everything shatters around us and they lack hoarding the resources. <laughs> Things like that. 
Now this only works with psychological tears, so don't go around throwing dirt in your eyes or chopping onions thinking it'll make you feel better. This is a response to mitigate the feelings of grief. It's basically the emotional version of what happens when we're in physical pain. When we get physically hurt, endorphins are released to block our pain receptors and make us feel better. The same thing happens when we're in psychological pain. When we're feeling grief, prolactin is released to make us feel better. So that brings us back to sad music. We as humans have empathy. We can emulate and understand feelings from other people, observing animals, and even sometimes associating them with inanimate objects. When we hear music that has the same characteristics as sadness, we empathize. That triggers the release of prolactin to try and tame those feelings, but we're not actually experiencing any psychological trauma. It's just music. We get those consoling effects from prolactin, but none of the downsides from actually being psychologically harmed. So your body floods you with all these emotional feel-good chemicals to tame an emotional pain that isn't really there. And it feels good. But it doesn't work for all of us. Something I've said before and I'm going to say a hundred times again is that we are all different. This effect varies widely between us. You can be so greatly affected by prolactin that it's one of the greatest feelings you can have or it could just be like, all right, I guess. We learned about this prolactin response thanks to Dr. David Huron. Uh, at the time of recording this, he is Professor Emeritus at the School of Music of Ohio State University. I attended a lecture by him a few years ago. He was super cool. He even talked to me afterwards and answered a few of my questions and he graciously gave me permission and best wishes to use his research in this video. So big thanks to Dr. David Huron. Thank you so much. Of course, the research of music and how it affects our brain and body is a relatively young subject of study. So this might just be one piece in the puzzle of how music affects our moods. But one thing we know for sure, regardless of its mechanisms, is that sad music can help lift us up when we're feeling down. Music isn't just entertainment or art. It heals, it consoles. It's a way of connecting and empathizing with one another. Do you enjoy listening to sad music? Do you have a go-to song that you like to listen to when you're in that certain mood? Let me know in the comments below. I know I have a whole playlist of acoustic sad songs that I listen to. If you found this stuff as interesting as I do, you'll enjoy my video on why your PC keyboard is named after the instrument. And please like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends, do all that great quick free stuff that lets me know you're actually enjoying these videos and I should keep making them. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and enjoy yourself.